Hello, it's Bill, the Knee Pain Guru. Today is Monday, June 27th, 2022. Today, <coughs> today we're going to talk about um, when to baby the leg with knee pain. Yeah, the uh, we're going to, this is a blog post that I, let's see, here we go. We're going to zip on over there. We're going to head on over to, I'm going to share the screen here. We are going to talk about when to baby your leg when it has knee pain. And this is a concept that's not very well talked about. Uh, it seems like this obscure thing out there, however, it can be extremely effective. So we're going to cover that today, and then we're going to cover any questions you have around knee pain, as well as questions that have come in since last week, since last Monday when we had our uh, last live stream. So you can type those questions in the live chat, and I will address those before I leave the call today. So whatever questions you have about your knees, your knee pain, uh, doctors, physical therapists, uh, exercise, whatever that is, Type those in the live chat, and I will address those before we leave today. So I want to share share my screen. Let me make sure I got. Let's see. I want to preview this in a new tab. Share the screen here. I'm going to share this and zip on over here. So this is um, a blog post article that I just wrote over the weekend, and it's when to baby the leg with knee pain. And uh, a lot of times, once again, we live in a, a society very much where we want to Put, have this mentality of pushing through the pain, no pain, no gain. Pain is weakness leaving the body. Uh, just do it, you know, the old Nike slogan. And what ends up happening is it gets us in this uh, hamster wheel loop where the pain never gets any better. Uh, we will get marginal improvement, then we'll go and exercise and go to physical therapy again. And then we're back in the pain cycle and we're doing things to, uh, we get less and less able to deal with the pain because the pain level goes up over time as well as our, our body's ability to deal with that pain goes down as we get older. It's just a natural part of uh, tolerating things as we get older. And so here's the concept that I, I want to share with you around learning from a baby. Um, when when a baby is first born, this was like it was with my daughter. I didn't know when she was hungry or thirsty or tired or wanted to be rocked and held or needed a diaper change. I had no idea. She just cried. So over that period of time or those first days and weeks and months that uh, when she was born, I had to kind of figure that out. Um, you know, if she was hungry, if she was thirsty, if she was tired, she needed a diaper change. And, and as that process went and I learned what she needed, I knew that when she made a certain face, the diaper needed to be changed. I knew that if I fed her at 10 a.m., that in a couple hours, there was a good chance the reason why she was going to be crying was because she was hungry. So I began to determine or uh, suss out little distinctions and nuances as to why she was crying. So how that relates to what's going on with your knee is that there, there, there kind of seems to be this blanket understanding of what's going on with the knee. You have knee pain. Well, you need to strengthen the muscles in the legs to get rid of knee pain, or you need to stretch it, or you need to take these pills, or do this shot, or do a surgery to find out what's going on, or go back to physical therapy. 
and it gives like this very limited amount of options and they're they're very blanketed as far as the understanding of what's going to help the the pain go away in the knee and what i'm talking about when you want to uh, baby the leg is you want to begin to establish that relationship with what's going on with your knee in a way where you see these distinctions and nuances distinctions and nuances for what your knee needs at any one given point in time meaning your knee may need to rest your knee may need exercise your your knee may need water like drinking water your may, knee may be dehydrated in the case of arthritis that's across the board uh, nutrition your diet may, may need to be changed supplementation your body may need certain supplements in order to help out how the knee feels uh, you may need to breathe many times when we are anticipating pain we'll hold our breath in anticipation of that pain which on a neurological level makes the body more tense and makes the knee more painful uh, your mindset many times it's we have this belief on how the knee can heal how the knee can improve how the knee can feel better and we limit our ability to get better by how we believe the knee can get better uh, so what ends up happening is we get kind of stuck in a box like okay well the physical therapist or the doctor said i need to strengthen the muscles in the leg but it makes my knee more painful but the doctor said i got to strengthen the muscles in the legs physical therapist said i got to strengthen the muscles in the legs for the knee to get better but the knee's more painful. So you can see that mindset shift of exercise and strengthening the muscles in the legs is the only way you're going to get out of pain and it's not working. Uh, and then the, the last piece I have here is this neurological re-education, which is understanding the intrinsic movement of the knee joint that we can get the pressure off of the tiny little nerves in the knee, the width of an eyelash that are being squeezed, sending a signal to your brain that you have pain. And by changing those neurological signals and teaching your knee how to be more in, a, the, the bones in your leg to be more in alignment with themselves, we can create space in the knee joint that allows the knee to begin to heal and feel better. So the, all of these different little distinctions and nuances that I'm talking about uh, can help us look at these little nuanced aspects of our knee being able to improve. And it's very much like treating our knee like a baby, treating our knee as if, well, it's like the knee is screaming because it hurts. We're not going to continue to push it. and, and aggravated and instigated even more, we're going to back off and observe and look at what the knee may need. Try some water, uh, rest it for a couple of days, uh, work on the, that intrinsic movement in the joint and see how that improves how the knee feels better. And the idea is we create a baseline. So the baby or the knee is quiet. And when we have a quiet baseline, we can determine if we do something that's actually making the knee feel worse. So uh, one of the things that I put in here was a, a section, section for the naysayers. And what I'm talking about the naysayers, are those are the people that it's like, ah, you know, no pain, no gain. Pain is weakness leaving the body. Push through the pain. Just do it. That mentality will only get you so far. You're, you're going to hit um, a plateau, you're going to hit a ceiling as far as your improvement with how the knee feels, and then you begin to justify, well, uh, that's just how my knee's going to, that's as good as my knee's going to get, or uh, that, that uh, that's just what happens when you get older, or 
I just got to push more. And what ends up happening is that that mentality, that's the mindset that can keep you stuck. And you'll see the justification of how the knee feels. I can deal with the pain. It's been worse. Uh, I can handle it, that kind of thing. And what ends up happening is that just sets up the conditions for the joint to dehydrate, the joint to wear. And when the joint wears, now you're looking at an arthritis diagnosis and it's not a fun place to be. So, okay, I'm going to zoom back over here to move this. Uh, let's see. We got some questions that are coming in. Questions here from, and I'd encourage anybody that's watching live right now, type your questions in the comment section or the, the live chat. And I'll address those. Um, and what, um, make sure to give the video a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications for future videos. Okay, let's get some questions over here. Sharon says, So, what do you think of dextrose prolotherapy? Um, a dextrose is a form of sugar. Prolotherapy is an injection of a sugar water solution into the joint at an area of irritation. Um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of needles like across the board. I've had prolotherapy before in my life. Um, not a fan of needles. So if I can get the pressure off of the nerves, change the neurological signaling in the knee myself, uh, then the conversation is a little bit of a moot point. Uh, generally, from from my understanding, you're looking at prolotherapy when there's been an injury for an extended period of time that's not healing. And by using the prolotherapy strategically uh, to irritate, let, let's say, a, a, you know, a, something tendon or a ligament or a muscle that's just kind of stuck, um, that can be helpful, but a lot of times structure governs function. So we get the body in alignment and then let's see what happens on the other side of that. Okay, let's see. Vinny writes, can prolonged bed rest cause chondromalacia and damage the cartilage? Uh, the bed rest in and of itself, I wouldn't believe would damage the cartilage. Uh, the tension pattern that the body takes on, and this is when I was talking about when the baby, the knee, uh, looking at the neurological re-education of the joint. When there's a tension pattern in the leg, and in chondromalacia, there is a, tends to be a tight IT band, and the, the knee cap is kind of pasted onto um, the, the tibia. So when the knee bends, there's a grating on the back of the kneecap, which can be extremely painful. Um, that tension pattern takes on, it is taken on by the body as a result of an imbalance of tension from an accident, an injury, a surgery, a trauma. So it isn't the bed rest that caused the chondromalacia. It's the tension pattern that like, let's say you were lying a certain way in bed or you were watching um, uh, programs or having conversations uh, while uh, you were uh, phone calls that are stressing you out or the injury that led to you resting in bed. That is what can lead to the tension pattern that when you get up out of bed after a couple of days, now the knee is grating. <laughs> And it, it's being painful. So it's a little bit of, um, we have to look at not the bed causing the issue. It's the tension pattern in the neurology of the body. Okay. Vin S. Vinny S. Can two months without knee movement cause damage to cartilage? Um, I wouldn't imagine damage to cartilage would be caused by a lack of movement. I would imagine cartilage damage would be caused by uh, some sort of impact or some sort of movement in that. That's, 
definitely something. Um, it would it would make more sense for you to give a little bit more context on what you're dealing with, like a, a doctor's diagnosis that's indicating that the cartilage is damaged. Um, like, like what is the diagnosis that you're dealing with? What happened? Like um, sometimes asking these questions in isolation leaves more questions unanswered rather than a solution as to what you need to deal with or what you need to work with to get yourself out of pain. Um, the knee feels irritated, stiff, and dry. And that, once again, looking at, well, what was the injury? Injury, accident, surgery, trauma. Usually something happens beforehand that leads to the experience that we're dealing with today. And somewhere in there, it's a really, really great idea to get a, a doctor's diagnosis to at least know what you're dealing with. Are you dealing with something that's broken or torn? Or you're just dealing with pain or lack of range of motion. And then we could begin to uh, develop a strategy on how to get the knee to feel um, not irritated, not stiff, not dry. And what I found is there's tension patterns that go on in the body, like how we perceive life or um, uh, too, too much exercise without drinking enough water or uh, riding a bicycle too much. We, we don't have a balance in the tension in the body and it causes these issues that we're looking at. Any feedback on A-Post shoes? Uh, Sharon, I'm not familiar with what A-Post shoes are. Let's see. Sharon writes, interesting topic. I haven't seen it elsewhere. Yes. Uh, everything that I, I talk about is from the past 23, uh, June of 99 was when I had my ACL reconstruction. And this had become an obsession for me to get back to judo. And after judo, it was just an interest of mine um, to figure out how to get the body to heal, my own body to heal. So uh, this is a conglomeration of all of the, the training that I've done from body work training that's osteopathically based in nature, uh, my study in martial arts, which evolved around uh, breathing movement relaxation um so this this is what i found that works really well first to get you out of pain and then to have feel really good on a daily basis as far as how um your body feels okay vinia says what happens if Hyaline cartilage gets damaged. Uh, I mean, it's it's like any anything else that gets damaged. <laughs> There's something going on with it, and that compromises. Um, here's a concept that isn't talked about that much. It's called tensegrity structure. It's a um, it's the understanding that the body is a series of pulleys and levers, like a a geodesic dome or a bicycle wheel. And when we, we have a, the rim of a bicycle wheel, we have the hub, and we have the spokes that go out from the hub to the rim, or yes, from the hub to the rim. And when we, if there is an imbalance of tension in those spokes, what happens is the ability of that bicycle wheel or the tensegrity structure makes it less and less able to support the weight that's put on the wheel. We bring that wheel back into balance by loosening some spokes and tightening other spokes. By bringing that wheel back into true, the wheel rolls more efficiently, it can support more weight, and it's not going to wear and break as easily as quickly in general. So now we take that same concept to the physical body and we have an issue with our knee. Uh, 
the when the body is compensating for the need, the balance of tension in the body shifts and changes. So if we have a situation where cartilage gets damaged, there was something going on in the physical body that brought it out of balance, brought the physical body out of true. What we need to do instead of thinking of, well, I need to strengthen what's weak in the body to bring the body back into balance. The whole concept with treating your knee as you would a baby or how to baby the knee is that we relax what got tight as a result of the injury, accident, surgery, trauma. And in doing so, we bring the body back into balance. When the body is back into balance, now whatever cartilage damage that took place has the opportunity to heal. And the body has the ability to get the resources in the form of water and nutrition and supplementation to these areas of the body that are um, that now have the space to get uh, get the food and nutrition to those areas. For instance, cartilage damage or um, knee pain, a lack of range of motion, arthritis, uh, torn cartilage, um, torn meniscus damaged tissues. So this is, uh, you, you work, what I'm referring to, you're working in conjunction with the conventional medical model, uh, be it if you have a, a, a tibial plateau fracture or something like that. Yes, you need the medical intervention to fix what's broken or torn, and at the same time, we have to look at this neurological signal that's going on in the knee that caused the knee to get out of balance. And we're dealing with issues on the other side of uh, the surgery, the physical therapy. Okay. Let's see. Vinny S. writes, I had two two-month bed rest due to head surgery. Now I have chondromalacia. Right. So there was an injury, <laughs> head surgery, uh, and now the body laid in bed a certain way as a result of that head surgery. So this gets out of looking at it's just the knee and it's just chondromalacia and looks at the tension pattern the body took on as a result of the doctor's diagnosis that led up to the need for the head surgery. So that's stress and tension that we're looking at the body in, in a holistic perspective, that that stress and tension from the head surgery affected your whole body. It affected your digestion. It affected how you sleep. It affected how you burn minerals. It affected how you moved. And what happens is now that leads up to uh, an... Uh, the the surgery. Now you have this bed rest. The body holds on to that tension, and you did the bed rest as the doctor had said. But you get out of bed, and now that tension pattern is locked within your neurology. So you have a diagnosis of chondromalacia. So we can look at it. We we have to look at the chondromalacia, but we have to look at the bigger picture as well. Otherwise, we're going to miss it. We're going to miss, and th this is what happens in the conventional medical model. They're only looking at the chondromalacia. They're only looking at the knee. They're not looking at the broader perspective of what needs to be addressed in the physical body, in your mind, in your emotions, water, nutrition, exercise, breathing, uh, stretching, neuromuscular re-education in terms of what needs to be brought to the table so you can heal. So the body can heal. So your body has what it needs to heal itself. If that's making sense, give the video a thumbs up, like and subscribe to the channel, turn on notification for future videos um, as I do these answer questions. Uh, let's see. Okay. Sharon says, if you try water, try to have it not be chlorinated, fluoridated. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that those chemicals in my water. Sharon says, oh, and I already have bone on bone arthritis, but I do think this babying helps a lot. I stay off it for a day, always better. I wish I had more mechanical strategies. Thank you for answering my 
Polo question. Okay, the mechanical strategies, uh, that, that's what I help clients with. Uh, you can reach out uh, down below scrolling um, on the screen. You can head on over to my website, thekneepainguru.com. Get on the newsletter list. Uh, you can also sign up for my uh, group coaching program, Knee Club. Make sure to sign up for the premium program. The link is in the description box below, but that, um, that, that's what I do. That's my day job is helping people out of knee pain. And you can also reach out on my toll-free number, uh, 877-891-9484. Once again, those are both scrolling on the bottom of the screen as well as in the description box below. Okay, Vinny says, I have chondromalacia only at superficial layer of hyaline cartilage. The glossy layer is damaged in my report. Okay, so it goes back to that uh, bicycle wheel analogy. We get, we reestablish the tensegrity structure in the body. The body begins to heal. And it's because we're taking the pressure off of the nerves off of the cartilage, uh, whatever is causing the discomfort in your knee. Okay, let's see. Then he says, once cartilage is damaged, it does not recover. That's why I've heard. So what is the solution? I already covered the solution is getting, reestablishing the balance of tension in the body. In the example of the bicycle wheel, what I was talking about. Okay, Sharon says I had a coccyx breaks in my a coccyx break in my twenties, now sixty, and re-injured with childbirth. I think it led to my alignment being way off. Problems now. Uh, yes, that that can be part of it. Um, we we look at where the pain is, and we look at uh, where the tension patterns that you notice. When the pain level is high, our ability to be aware of the tension patterns are diminished because we're only focusing on where the pain is. Uh, we don't, we aren't aware of underlying patterns, meaning like um, stub your toe, you, you compensate for the stub toe, which causes you to walk differently, and then you get knee pain. So now you go to the doctor and the doctor treats you for knee pain. But the knee pain doesn't go away because there's still that neurological pattern going on from the stub toe. We need to, we need to zoom out and we need to get a broader perspective of what's going on. And when the knee pain goes away, we relieve the knee pain to such an extent, you begin to get these connections with the break in the coccyx when you were 20 and how it changed how you walk. So then looking at the tension patterns in the pelvis, tension patterns in the lower back, as far as how we can create comfort in those areas to relieve the tension pattern so it pulls the, the, the collapsed tensegrity structure in the knees, causing the bone-on-bone -bone situation. So uh, there, there's so much we can do. There, there's so much we can do. It's just the point of shifting your mindset as to looking at how the body heals differently so you aren't doing the same thing over and over expecting a different result. Okay, uh, Sharon says, APOS are orthopedic new shoes, newish. You wear for hours each day, they realign your gait, knee position, etc. Okay, um, I'm not a big fan of those types of shoes or orthotics because your neurology fires at 286 miles per hour, like pretty fast. And what ends up happening is if we, uh, it's like using a crutch and after something is healed and we continue using the crutch, it limits our body's ability to heal to heal. Uh, the more we, uh, like, um, I'm, I'm of the belief that the body has the infinite capacity to heal itself. If 
given the right condition to do so. And unless we set up those conditions for the body to heal, we end up going back into the same patterns or variations of the same pattern. So um, I see the same thing with orthotics, same thing with those types of shoes that we can shift the neurology of what's going on in our feet and it'll have an effect all the way through our whole structure. And, uh, and then we're on to something else. The body's integrating, integrates quickly. So I, I see it as somewhat of a limiting uh, factor. Okay, Vinny writes, what I have heard is once the hyaluronic cartilage is damaged, the slide of the patella is not smooth on the tibia and even it heal, uh, even it heal, it heals with fibrosis cartilage, which is not glossy and smooth. Um, and that may be the case, you know, it may be the case, but I, once again, I believe the body has the infinite capacity to heal itself. If we get the bones and the relationship of the bone in the upper leg, the femur, and the bones in the lower leg, the tibia and the fibula lined up correctly in relationship to the patella tendon, and you walk with that balance in there, doesn't he hurt? If the pain goes away and it doesn't hurt, then do you care if the diagnosis was hyaline cartilage damage? I pose the same question to clients that I work with with bone on bone. If you had a bone on bone diagnosis and you had no pain or issues with range of motion in the knee, would you care? I mean, it's a legit question. Do we want to focus on fixing the diagnosis? Because the diagnosis is a professional opinion by a doctor valuable professional opinion, but we need to take that into consideration with the larger picture of what we're trying to accomplish. And if you want to fix everything, because the body is constantly breaking down and building back up and breaking down and building back up, do we want to stay in that place of being stuck and limited by what the doctor diagnosed us to be, or do we want to live our life? Do we want to have comfort in our physical body? And do we want to have flexibility and mobility in our movement? It's a legit question. Some people are totally into, they want to make sure everything is absolutely fixed. Uh, they want to be able to go back to the doctor after so many months and say, look at the hyaline cartilage in my knee and tell me if it's fixed or not. And what if the doctor said, yeah, it's fixed, but you still have pain? You, you kind of see, you, you lose the forest from the trees in terms of the goal that you're trying to accomplish. Create comfort in the knee. This, this is the whole approach from my program. Create comfort in the knee and set up the conditions so the body can heal itself. And it's like wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat. The tension in the physical body is going to shift when you introduce comfort. That's the natural part of how the body responds. It responds to pain by tightening up more. It responds to comfort by relaxing more. So where do you, where do you want your focus to be? Uh, is there a chance of recovery? Yes. Of course there is. And then Sharon writes, ah, that makes sense. Relax, not only strengthen areas. Yes, Sharon, it's like raise the bridge or lower the river. <laughs> it's like sometimes, and, and this is where we're in a, a very, I try to find the balance between uh, male and female in all of us. Like we, we have male components, female components in who we are as human beings. And a lot of times we get, especially with pain, we get very much stuck in a male mentality mode. We got to do it, push more, uh, 
uh, fix this thing when a lot of times it the answer lies in the the female aspect of who we are which is by relaxing the tension relaxing what got tight from the accident the injury the surgery the trauma and then the body comes in the balance there's always time to push and and this is what i'll uh i'll go back to my screen here i'm gonna go back to the article um this is what i i have in the um this is on uh the knee pain guru website As an aside, I believe the body is designed to be pushed out of its comfort zone. It causes us to grow and change in ways we wouldn't normally if we sat on a couch and ate bonbons all day. However, when you start out the process in pain, pushing through the pain is not going to get you out of pain. As a matter of fact, when the euphoria of the adrenaline high wears off, many times the body is in more pain afterwards and will take longer to recover. So I do believe the body, there is a time and a place for the body to be pushed, just not all the time. We have to have timing in all of these um, ingredient, ingredients to the recipe to getting out of knee pain. Let's see. Vinny writes, if I walk, I feel better and no pain. If a day I do not walk, I have a lot of pain. And that comes from the balance, the imbalance of tension. The idea, Vinny, and, and this, is, this is what I was talking about in this article here. Let me make sure I got this. This is the part when I talk about, as a matter of fact, when the euphoria of the adrenaline high wears off, many times the body is in more pain afterwards and will take longer to recover. So what's happening is when you go for a walk, when you go for a walk, there is a euphoria that's created in the body. The exercise creates endorphins. And these are good things. Believe me, these are not bad things. It's just understanding that the tension pattern that's going on in your body uh, is only out of pain when you exercise, only out of pain when you walk. So what ends up happening is when you, it's, it's impossible to relax. And I'm sure you would like to relax at some point in time, just be able to sit down or lie down and not have the worry of the pain to come back. That's when we create comfort, change the neurological signaling in the knee over and over again. We, re, we bring down the general level of tension in the body to such an extent that you just don't feel pain. So, um, yes. Okay, Sharon. That makes, thank you. That makes so much sense regarding coccyx break. Answer you gave, not sure I explained Apos correctly. Sorry, yes, I agree. Infinite ability to heal if you have the right guides, exercise, proper focus. Yes, um, I have, and that, like I said, that's what I do. Um, uh, it is help people out of pain. It was my, my journey. Uh, my dislocated my left knee four times. Uh, had reconstructive surgery on the ACL in my left knee. And uh, that's where I my journey began. Because after the surgery and the physical therapy, the docs had, uh, the doctor and the physical therapist didn't have anything to offer. Even though I still had pain and swelling and tension and my hips and lower back were compensating and I felt like an old man in my late 20s. So not a, not a fun uh, it wasn't a fun perspective looking at the rest of my life thinking I would be limping and all of that. So I found um, this was my path. Uh, Sharon, no, I wouldn't care about diagnosis if I was pain free. Yeah. I like, I, I had a, a friend who was a doctor and her grandfather was a doctor and the saying in their family was uh, uh Health is a function of a lack of diagnosis. 
So if you think about that one, from a family of doctors, it, it's kind of scary that as long as you don't feel anything wrong, you're good. <laughs> so the more, the more we can take care of ourselves, and I'm all about preventative maintenance, uh, things we can do um, beforehand so we never get to a crisis. And that's consequently what happens is many people, um, they'll, they'll ignore it. They'll get into that no pain, no gain. Pain is weakness, leaving the body, push through the pain, just do it mentality. Um, I can handle it. The pain's been worse. I have a high pain tolerance. And they get into this cycle where they're making their situation worse on a daily basis. And then when it gets to a point where they can't deal with anything, then they go to the doctor. And then it's a crisis situation. So now the doctor is in crisis mode trying to figure out how to get you out of pain. So you can see that there's a huge mindset piece that goes into getting your body to a place where it never, um, we need to change the mindset in order to be able to get um, permanently out of pain. How important is knee lubrication? Uh, very. It, it's, your body is made up of 80% water. And, and that's the whole premise of um, arthritis. Arthritis is diagnosed as stiff and achy joints. The joint is dehydrated. And if the knee doesn't have lubrication, then the joint begins to wear. The more the joint rubs and wears and irritates, the worse the knee gets. And the joint begins to deteriorate until it gets to a bone-on-bone -bone situation. So changing the neurological signaling by working with the intrinsic movement of the joint in a position of comfort is going to allow for the tensegrity structure, the balance of tension in the knee to be reestablished. So the water that you're drinking can actually, the body can get that water into the knee to rehydrate the joint to pr provide the lubrication. So there are, there's layers and levels to this game in terms of understanding how the body works. Not necessarily from a conventional medical model, but just a common sense model. If your body's dehydrated, it doesn't have enough water to do its daily functions. Uh, digest food, uh, the brain, the, the organs. You need to, uh, to break down old cells and repair and replace new cells. So it, we have to look at this, the body as a system as opposed to just the knee. Because if we just look at the knee, we're leaving a whole lot on the table and it's not... Um, we, we end up with pain that doesn't go away. So, let's see. I have... Let's see. Let's see. There is a... I got some questions here. Let me see. I do my... I got some questions that came in. I want to address these. This was from Warren. Hi, Bill. I just signed up. It's a new member of Knee Club. Not sure I could swing the call today. My pain is below my knee on the inside medial shin area. I believe it is scar tissue pushing on my nerves in the area. I have pretty good strength, but I still have lingering pain. It travels down my shin towards my ankle. The pain point is near the site where they took my hamstring graft for ACL reconstruction. I've been following the guide and doing the pain pattern interrupts. 1, 2, 3, 22, 23, and 40. Are there any specific additional pain pattern interrupts or strength building videos you recommend? I focus on this week. Thank you in advance. Warren, what I'm going to do is take this question. This is really a members area question. So I'm going to take that question and put it in the, the Facebook group. And um, we, I will answer that on the call today. So ju just to make a distinction, um, I have the knee club call here at 12.30 p.m. 
Eastern time. Um, I do these calls, these answering general questions about shifting your mindset about what's going on with your knees and knee pain, look at healing in the body differently uh, at 1130 on Mondays. So um, this, this is general questions. This is like the Wild West. Anybody could shoot me questions here. The, the questions that I'll answer like Warren's will be in the knee club um, members area and I'll, I'll post, I'll take care of that for Warren. But just, just so you get an idea, there's a difference. Okay. Stephanie writes, this was on one of my videos. Um, this was regarding uh, around how knee pain affects your sex life. Stephanie writes, thank you for this video. You're so right. No one is talking about this. I had a torn meniscus and had knee surgery and my knee hurts during sex. Knee pain is very limiting and you're always thinking about the pain. You're so right. So, and this is, once again, you, when, when you're talking about intimacy in the bedroom, you're talking about sex, you want to be able to relax. And when you have knee pain, there's no relaxing. You're constantly worried about moving in a certain way that's going to inhibit the range of motion in the knee. So the more we can change the neurological signaling in the knee, get the knee comfortable, get it relaxed, get the full range of motion in the knee, you, your mind can kind of take it from there on how this can translate with, with intimacy with a partner that you're not inhibited by that. So, um, I am going to be doing uh, in the next couple of weeks uh, another video on that, how knee pain ruins your sex life. Okay, here is, this question came in from the knee pain guru customer service or contact box. Uh, Desia says, hi, my right knee is a mess, torn meniscus, bone on bone, Baker cyst, torn ACL muscle. Is there really a treatment for my ailing knee? PT, PT seems hard and painful. The shots, which ones work? Thanks, Desia. Okay, there's, there's a lot to unpack with this. Um, and it's important to look at has their surgery been done on this? Is this the situation with your knee? And there's, um, what do I want to say? This is exactly the diagnosis and what you're dealing with, or there's been surgery to repair a torn meniscus, um, a torn ACL muscle. Like there's a lot that I'm not really clear on to be able to address. And this is one of those situations where an integration of my approach and the conventional medical model would be helpful in terms of repairing what's broken or torn in the knee, like the ACL, like the muscle, like the torn meniscus. And then we can begin to see how to create comfort in the knee to set up the conditions so the body can heal itself. Um, and the, the shots, uh, you know, the shots at which ones work <clears throat> is it, it's a little bit of a, a, a crapshoot in, in a, in a sense that with that level of damage and not, not really knowing what exactly we're dealing with, if those things were repaired or that's the current state of the knee, um, shots aren't, I wouldn't imagine shots are going to do a whole lot in terms of giving relief. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications for future videos. Um, if you have any questions, type those in the live chat. I do have to scoot here in about five minutes because I got to get ready for the neat club call. It's my group coaching call where I work with uh, clients that sign up for uh, my program and we go over the specific strategies on how to get the knee out of pain. So, um, so based on what you're saying, 
um, I would be able to help specifically. So chondromalacia, I would have specific videos in the members area of my website that you sign up for. And um, I would we would work with those. Tight IT, pan, tight IT band and tension in the kneecap is one of the main things we'd look at initially and then see how that shifts and changes um, with making sure you're drinking plenty of water and other elements to that. Uh, let's see. Sharon, she writes, this has been very helpful. My first live chat. We'll call the number over the next week. Thank you. Yes, Sharon, absolutely. We will be here and happy to help. Um, and we'll do what we can. Okay. Let me see. Let me look at the questions here. Does he have... Question here from Linda. She writes, I have problems in one knee and my left hip. Would your membership be suitable for me? Yes, uh, absolutely suitable for you. This, of course, is... Uh, based on the fact that you've gone to the doctor and determined nothing is broken or torn in your knee or your hip. Uh, that is not that I couldn't help. However, we want to know what we're dealing with. And I, I'm real big on managing expectations because if the pain, think of something torn in your knee or in your hip, like a hangnail, the hangnail doesn't hurt unless you catch it on your clothes. So we can get you completely out of pain, but the moment you do something that catches the hangnail, the pain comes back. So it's not that the program wouldn't work. It's the fact that we have something torn in your body that needs to be addressed from a conventional medical approach. If that's what you desire or Understanding that movement in a certain way is going to catch the hangnail or the whatever's torn that can cause the pain again. So I just it, it's just really, really good for everybody that we know what we're dealing with and be able to move forward that way. Uh, I have a tilted patella. Do you have something for that? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, the, the patella tilts as a result of an imbalance of tension. This goes back to that um, bicycle wheel analogy. And once we begin to relax those tension patterns in the femur, the tibia, the fibula, and the patella, those are all four bones that make up your knee joint. Once we begin to relax those tension patterns and get the bones to line up, your body does this on its own. that uh, the, the patella balances back out and you don't have pain. So let's see here. And that one, let me see. This is from Marie. Marie writes, I'm 53. Way too young to have osteoarthritis of the knee, but not one, but in both knees. Okay, I recently met someone from a social media site. We haven't, we haven't met. Eventually, we will meet. How do I tell him about my knee issue? My biggest concern is not being intimate. My concern is how to find a balance on the on the bed while on my knees. Well, this is um, there. You go. This gets back to how knee pain can affect your sex life. And I, I'm all about creating comfort in the knee. So you never have an issue that you would need to bring up to Mr. Right or Mr. Right now, or however that works for you, uh, that you have comfort and you have full range of motion in the knee. That's, that's what I think. Let me help you. I'm happy to help whoever is open to being helped. That, that's a big thing, and that's why I do these videos, is to educate you so I'm able to help you. Because the people in Knee Club are already in that place of wanting to be helped, and I, the shifting the mindset isn't there. They're already there. 
getting help. They're getting results. They're getting relief. And then we take that information and pivot and move on to the next way to help their body relax on a deeper level. There isn't getting into um, these other concepts, which is what these calls are for. So whenever you're ready, head on over to the kneepainguru.com website and I'm able to help you. Okay, but if I exercise, I have more pain than how we will fix it. Only walking uh, gives relief and any minute exercise, it irritates it. The more you create comfort, the more the level, the general level of tension in your body increases. So you work with the intrinsic movement of your knee joint while you're sitting on a couch or you're sitting in bed or lying in bed or whatever that is. There's even pain pattern interrupts. That's what I call them that you can do while you're walking. The more comfort we create while you're lying down, while you're sitting, while you're standing, while you're walking, then if you exercise, we can look at the specific exercise and the tension pattern that's going on in your body that is causing the pain and create comfort in that area as well. So we, we just create more and more space inside. That's where space gets shrunk because of the tension that the body takes on as a result of protecting itself from the accident, the injury, the surgery. The trauma. Okay, let me. Th I I'm gonna have to scoot here because because I have the my group coaching program. I got my knee club program. Okay, I'm gonna have to scoot for this week. We're gonna have another one next Monday. Not sure what the topic is yet. I'll, uh, I have a few in the hopper I will write about and post. Uh, head on over to the Knee Pain Guru website, uh, thekneepainguru.com. Sign up for the newsletter. Um, sign up for Knee Club program. It's underneath the products there at the top. Uh, you can give us a call on our toll-free number, 877-891-9484. We'll get you, get you on the road to recovery get you feeling better pretty, pretty quickly. You know, when you start creating comfort, results happen pretty quick. So, okay. I got to scoot. I got to go uh, teach now. Let me get this off of here. This is Bill Paravano, the knee pain guru. Thanking you so much for your time, for your attention, your focus. Great work. Have a great day, have a great week, and I will see you next Monday, if not sooner. Have a great one. Bye-bye.